Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi and I'm on a road trip. Travels by motorbike. You want to be on a road trip? Well, I'll tell you what, meet me back at the shop and we'll talk about it. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, I'm back from my trip. It was about a 3,300 mile trip. I rode all the way from uh, up here in Washington State, all the way down to Arizona, down to an event called Chopper Town Campout, and hanging out with a bunch of friends of mine down there I haven't seen for a while, so it was a great time. But it was a long trip. Now, I know some of you want to go out and do a trip maybe like that. But my suggestion is start with a short trip. Get used to your bike. Get used to your gear. Now, whether it was the first time you've ever been out camping or you've been camping out a lot, but have you ever camped with a motorcycle? It's a little different in a sense that... Uh, you got to pack your gear and you're limited on space. What we need to know is, is this your first time camping on a motorcycle or you've done it several times? Now this, if you've done it several times, you've probably got some idea of what you need to do. Now I've been doing this for years and I've been traveling across the country on my motorcycle and packing my own gear. Now there's several things that you might want to keep in mind. So I guess what we'll do is we'll start out with, is the bike ready? Seriously, have you got good tires? Is the engine running fine? Has everything been kind of gone through and everything working like it should be? If that's the case, great. So what size bike is it? Because that will also limit to what you can take with you. So you could be riding on one of these big boys. This old shovel head is what I took down to, uh, down to Arizona. Or you could be on a old hardtail Harley or a hardtail uh, Yamaha or even a Honda 90. Now I'm going to do a trip on one of those one of these days. I have my backup dual sport that I built from an old XS650. And they've got space for putting stuff on. These also have racks put on them for the hard bags, which I'll show you over here. And these are the hard bags that I could pack my gear into. These are from Tusk which is uh these are pretty stout bags um i really like them and then they're fairly reasonable on price so this trip that you want to do how far is it away well i would suggest or do before doing any really long trips is to do a couple of short ones to areas that you know Maybe you've been there hiking, maybe you've been there up there camping at the campgrounds, or it's dispersed camping, or it's along a river. I don't know exactly where, but I mean, you should go up there and try out your gear. Hell, you could try it out in your backyard just to make sure everything works. So I guess what we'll need to do is we need to get down and kind of talk what kind of gear would be good out there. Now, I'm not sponsored by uh, any certain company out there. I have no sponsors at all. This is stuff that I've picked up over the years 
of rolling along the roads and figuring out what I needed. My first big trip was in on an old 71 uh, shovel head. I had a canvas bag with some gear in it and a bedroll. And that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, maybe a small tool bag. I did a trip all the way to, I think it was Montana with some friends. And it was the first good run that I've ever done with some other other people and um and it, it turned out to be okay although there was some questionable points in it where i did catch my sleeping bag on fire that wasn't good anyway so what we need to do is we need to talk over what kind of gear that you might want to take now this is all up to you what you want to take or not take I'm just giving out suggestions right here, right now. So let's get to it. Now, assuming that you've got a tent, you can do a tent. Now this is uh, one from Walmart. They're cheap, but I've had it for years. I've done a lot of traveling across country. This, but you can see the size of it. This one here is a more expensive tent. This is from REI. This is a half dome. Um, but you can look at the sizes here. It's starting to get a little big. But it's a good tent. Pricey, but a good tent. And then one tiger. Uh, this is the a little tent that I picked up. Um, I'm thinking of what was the name, the, um, the bungalow. This is called the bungalow. Uh, they're about 120 bucks, but they don't come with poles, but they pack up nice. Now I've made up a set of poles to go with this out of some old tent poles and everything that I've stuffed down in there. Good tent, like it, uses this one quite a bit. Here's something interesting. These are two Polish ponchos. They come with um, the poles and everything that you hook together. Now it's a heavy canvas. Uh, it makes up kind of a nice little teepee style tent. You do not have a, a liner in the, on the ground, so you have to put down a ground cloth on these. But you can see it packs up quite nice. You can also use it as a poncho. Um, there's two of them here. They button together. I'd open this up, but it's quite the mess right now. And this is, we've used this. If you look back on one of our videos on the, on the Christmas video, I think this, we actually tried this out. Mrs. Miyagi and I did, and it worked out quite well. Another way to go is just a tarp. Now this is one of those DD uh, tarps. These are a three by three, three meters by three meters. And so nine by nine. And I've used this extensively on a lot of different stuff. I'll even use this when I'm just out by myself and I'll do uh, an L or, or I guess uh, what they call an L tent where you can come off the bike, down, stick it out, and then back again so that you actually have a sleeping area. Now there is companies out there that make something a little bit better. Um, they make actually tents that work with motorcycles. They're a little on the pricey side. Uh, one's called the, the Goose Wingman. Um, you can look that up. Um, I'll, if I can find a link, I'll put it in the link uh, comment section below. And Nomad 2 uh, by a gentleman. Let me see if I got it over here. Um, Abel Brown. A Nomad 2 built by Abel Brown. Um, that's another one that's designed to hook onto the to the bike itself and stake out, which is kind of nice. Uh, a lot of state parks won't allow you to do that because they want you to park on 
the designated drive area. So I could get a little questionable there. But if you're out dispersed camping, boy, would that work out perfect. I've looked in the direction of uh, the, uh, the Nomad 2. Uh, although the, the Goose uh, from uh, Wingman was an interesting because it's more like a swag. It's all self-contained. You don't, it'll freestand. You can hook it to the bike or you can stake it out with poles and everything that work well too. Um, but it's a bulky unit. It comes with uh, an air mattress and bag, I believe, and it's pricey. So it depends on that. Uh, but I mean, the cheap way, a tarp, these are actually designed for hammocks, um, which is another way to go. Use the tarp. And the tarp over the hammock, which I've, I've got, I've got photos of me. I'll pop one in here right about now, and of me, how uh, my setup was with the hammock, and and the tarp setup. That that combo works quite well. You can see that's a pretty small setup then. Okay, well, let's uh, kind of move on to, oh yeah, here's another thing. If you want to go real cheap, uh, you can buy these from Walmart. These are a, a five by seven tarp. You can hook two of them together or one on the ground and one as a cover, and they work quite well too. Sleeping bags. Uh, this one here is a... What degree? This is rated for 32 degrees. Now, 32 degrees, it's, yeah, you're not going to be comfortable, but you're not going to die. And I like it. Uh, this is a, one of the old Pacific uh, Crest ones. Um, it's a mummy style bag, and and it packs down quite nice. Now, I have another one that packs even smaller than this, but it, I don't think it works it well. Um, this one works fairly well. There's a lot of good brands out there. The problem with getting like a Walmart one is going to be a big bag and it's going to be bulky. And that's the problem. You're trying to keep your weight down and room on the bike. Now, along with that, I have one of these insulated uh, ponchos. Uh, yeah, here we back to the poncho, which actually zips up and can be used as a bag for light weather or it can be this one here i normally what i do is i open this one up zip it and everything and then i'll slide this bag inside of it and it makes for a nice warm uh, comfortable uh, sleeping area plus you can use it if you have a hammock you can use it as an under quilt uh, or you can wear it as a jacket if you want uh, I got this from uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters. Um, they're not real cheap, but I tell you what, this combo really worked well. I, I was up in the hills where you know, it was 80 degrees um, during the day, and then it dropped down to around 45, and I stayed nice and toasty in this setup. Along with that... You might want an air mattress, unless you're like sleeping on the ground and having rocks poke you. I'm not. So I've got this one here. Uh, it's just a standard. It packs up nice and small. Um, there, there's several brands out there that you can get into buying. Um, but uh, I got this. I think I bought this at Walmart. And I also have a little blow-up pillow, which I really like to pack around. Because what I do with the mummy bag, I just inflate this and slide it up into where it, it would go over your head. And then that just kind of holds this in place. So it's pretty comfy. And then I went really luxury. I've got the backpacker's um, cot. So this gets me totally off the ground and it works quite well. 
Now you're getting down to where, we were, like with this, I was packing quite a bit of gear. So I'm basically packing this, these items, and a sleeping bag, and, and my tent to be comfortable. And that's one thing you want to do is you want to enjoy this trip and you want to be comfortable. Now you don't have to go as far as I did as getting this uh, backpackers uh, uh, cot, but I'm 72 years old and I've slept on the dirt enough through my lifetime. This was actually quite nice. And a lot of times I'll even use it use the with the cot and this. Uh, that just adds a little bit more insulation. You can slide this inside of your bag here and then slide uh, your sleeping bag in there. So now you have a really insulated area. One other thing that I've learned over the years, uh, these little hot hands, these little uh, heated pads that you can buy pretty much anywhere. Um, you can shake these up and throw those in the bag with you and there's another heat source and you'd be surprised how nice these work especially in super cold weather i've done this before where i put it in the bag with me and just having that heat source in there these are pretty good these are an 18 hour one so you stay fairly warm you get up in the morning you have something that'll warm your hands too while you're outside trying to get everything ready but you know that's just a little solution to staying staying warm now, a couple luxury items that sometimes I'll pack along with me is like this little fold-up table. Uh, I got this through uh, Firebox, and it just, it's got a uh, couple rods that go through, the, through it that hold it in place. And uh, they just slide through there. So that makes a nice little area, especially when you're dispersed camping. And you want a little cook table or a little work table or something to put your stuff on and get it up off the ground. Um, these are fairly lightweight. Um, like I said, I got this through uh, uh, Firebox. Um, that's another company and when we get to stoves here I'll show you what they have for product but also and it's lightweight and you can see it packs up pretty small another product here is one of those fold-up chairs along with this table and these chairs these are great little chairs that uh, I discovered, and I think a lot of you have probably seen these before. And they go together fairly easy. Now you have a camp chair. And these will, I guess they'll handle up to, uh, I forget what it was, 300 pounds or something like that. But it's... There's a lot of these out there. I think I spent uh, 20 bucks. I bought two of them. Um, they were 20 bucks each. And they're well worth it. They, uh, they actually work quite well. It's surprising, especially along with the table. All right, you've got camp set up and everything else. And it's now it's time to make a meal. Now, back in the old days, and I mean really old days, my go-to stove was this old Coleman here. Uh, it's a multi-fuel, and it was fairly easy to set up. It would fold up nicely, but it was still bulky. Yeah, you can still find these today. Uh, they have the pump up on them. They're kind of a, they'll burn white gas, and I've burned regular gas in here. I've burnt kerosene. A little kerosene's a little harder to get started, but it'll go. And I moved on to uh, the, Pro the Primus, which was this nice little stove here. It's kind of alcohol. Um, you can burn kerosene in them, but mostly an alcohol little stove. Um, but um, here again, a compact. 
And then I upgraded to doing an alcohol stove, which was just a burner. All you do is pour your fluid down inside and it has, once it heats up, you have a nice flame that uh, comes out of these. They're great, but here again, you got to pack extra fuel in another container and could tend to leak. Well, then I moved on to something else. I moved on to these solo stoves. Um, these were a these were a, a, a twig burner. You could throw twigs in here and burn them. Uh, this flipped over. You get a nice, you can put your pot on top up here. Um, you know, it just would sit right on top. And you could cook that way. You could also take one of these uh, smaller uh, alcohol stoves and put down inside, which worked quite well. They would just sit down in here. And then you put the burner cap back on it and you get the flames and it would heat it up. That works okay. I moved to the this firebox stove here. Now these fold up. They're another twig burner plus you can put in a butane unit that you can put in there that attaches to your cartridges. You can get the big and the small, doesn't matter what size. These work quite well. Now I pack this on, on a lot of trips doing the fact that I can either burn wood in here. So it has two places you can go in here and here to burn wood. And it's adjustable dampener and everything kind of on the side here. And you can adjust the height of these. You can even put in a solid fuel packet. You can put one of those in there and you'd be fine too. This goes on my, most of my trips now because I can go either way uh, depending on the weather conditions, whether we got dry conditions and they don't want you to have any open fires, well then I can switch over and have a large cooking area. They have all sorts of stuff that comes with when you buy the kit. And you can even, there's even one where you can drop the cylinder down in there and heat up water with one of these stainless steel cylinders. I really like these stoves uh, due to the fact that you can fold this up fairly quick. Boom. And you put your holds on and you're good to go. This will pack away in, into a kit like that. And it's nice. I like it a lot. You should go on YouTube and watch Steve. He's, he's, he goes out and actually tests these stoves. You watch him cook on them. He does some amazing meals and such with these little stoves here. But my always my go-to little stove that works well with my Stanley cook set here. This comes with two of these, uh, these little cups, which I re removed one because then I can drop this down inside. But this is a nice little stove that folds up. I mean, it doesn't take up hardly any room. You can pack it inside your other unit there. And then that screws on top of your cylinder. And this will flip out. So I kind of go back to in between the firebox and this stove here, this little uh, butane stove as my cookware. Now these things here, you can get them online on, on eBay and or on uh, Amazon. I think I bought this one here for 15 bucks. But what, you know, the convenience of it that is that it fits inside my little case here. Boom. These little uh, Stanley uh, containers are uh, at Walmart. I think I bought this one for like 14, 15 bucks. Over the last couple of years, I ended up picking up uh, this called uh, Cowboy Roll out of uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters. Uh, it's a nice little setup. 
Um, I also picked up, I bought this separate, uh, a larger rack to go with it. It's down and it has a little catch and it works under pressure. And then this is slid down over the staff. Now this is driven into the ground and your fire is right in this area. So you can move this around into whatever. But what also that comes with the kit is this nice little pot holder. If you want to heat up water or soup or whatever, that way you can hang, hang a pot on there and swing it over the fire or swing it back. It works out quite nicely. I've used this a lot. It's, uh, but here again, it's, it's only good when you can have fires. And of course we have the old jet boil. I've owned this one for probably, I don't know, eight years. And it always works. Um, it's a really nice little unit. It'll heat up water fast. You can get different attachments for these. I like it on short trips and such. It's quick. It doesn't take much room up in the bag. It's a great little unit. Now, over the years, I've uh, gone back and forth on uh, cookware gear. Uh, uh, this little cast iron frying pan is great. I've done a lot of cooking in it. The problem with it is it's heavy and it doesn't take up that much room, but here again, it's heavy if you're trying to work on weight wise. You can always use the old uh, mess kit. These things here are really cheap to find um, and you can put extra whatever inside here. These work well. And then you got your standard cook kit. You can get pretty much on anywhere on eBay, Amazon, whatever. And then we have, you know, the Stanley uh, pot. I really like these old pots. These things here are great. Um, if you're doing like, if I'm hydrating uh, freeze-dried hash browns, this really works well. Or doing some vegetables or stuff in there, I can drain the water off because of these holes in the front. It works really well, and it's got storage. You, like I said, it comes with two cups, um, but I have my cook stove in there, so that's quite nice, and it all folds up, down, and the handle locks into place, so this won't come off, and it's good and stable, and it's small. Now, from uh, um, Self-Reliance Outfitters, you can buy a, a kit like this, and I don't remember the price on it, but it's like I said, it's got the holes in here that you can hang this to heat it. Hell, you can even heat heat uh, you can even heat heat these water bottles, and these are uh, stainless steel, and they're pretty darn good. I've used them across country. Another thing too is that I mean you can these cups that comes with these, you know, they got the handle and everything, the measurements on the side. So if you need to measure out your water for your meal, it's great. One of the other things that I've opted for nowadays is I really like this frying pan from uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters. Now, it, this is stainless steel, and I'm able to put all my gear into it. Plus, it has this extra heating element. This is a much thicker bottom. But I've cooked a lot of stuff on it, and it comes with a cover. So if you want to poach something, like a poaching an egg or whatever, you can do that. Or poaching fish. Not poaching fish, but poaching fish. <laughs> anyway. And it works really great. And what I've done is I've set it up with uh, my drying towel, of course. I've got... Uh, a spare bag in here. I've got a cover for one of these uh, these little cups here, basically for this one. You can still hang it and still have a cover on it. Uh, I have one of these little uh, clamp deals that I got from Firebox Stoves. These are great. You want to pick up a pan. Um, 
And this is another thing that I've got from um, Self-Reliance Outfitters is that this little uh, dish that I use for eating out of, I can also use it for another frying pan if wanted to. But I also, like I said, I pack in here, I pack in um, a bag, the holder, um, the extra lid. I've got silverware in here, um, a fold-up spatula, a little uh, bamboo spatula. Now this works really well for all sorts of things. Uh, a fork and a spoon. And this is something else that I picked up. That fork and a spoon works really great. I got these from Firebox. This is what is so cool. Boom. Now I have a set of tongs for pick, picking up stuff. And when you're flipping bacon around or a fish or, you know, a piece of meat, boom, these things work really well. And it's just a little kit you can get from um, firebox stoves. Another thing I'll pack is I'll pack some uh, salt and pepper and then a small seasoning bottle. And I think that this has got, yeah, this has got uh, a Cowboy Kent's seasoning in here. We bought a lot of that. It's a really good seasoning for steak, fish, and whatever. And then just a little bottle of uh, dish soap for cleaning everything up. Everything I've got here fits into this little frying pan. Fold everything up and this will fit into my canvas bag. They also make uh, an actual bag for these. These are um, a waxed uh, bag, a canvas bag, that you can. Oh, that, another reason I really like this thing is that just this handle folds under. So now you have this nice little tight deal. So this all can go right into here. And what's nice about these bags are, if you need to put a fire out and you're close to the stream, these are great for going down and picking, the, getting some water out of the stream and, dumping onto your fire. Now I normally pack this in a uh, just a little canvas bag. So let's talk food. Um, <clears throat> on the road, depending on what you're going, if it's a short trip, you can pack whatever you you think that you can pack along. Some simple stuff, you know, of course, the mountain home. These are these are good. They're not a real prime meal, but uh, they'll keep you they'll keep you satisfied. Uh, this is a mac. What is it? Chili mac with beef. These are pretty good. I like them. I also pack uh, some of this uh, dehydrated uh, hash browns. You can get these are those ones that you get in little square boxes and such. Uh, Mrs. Miyagi just uh, vacuum packs this up for me so, and gives them in uh, proportions and then we just put the instructions inside the bag so so I've got like three or four of them in here that work quite well. Uh, I also pack uh, some vacuum packed oil that Mrs. Miyagi's made up for me, uh, little packets here case I need a little bit of extra oil or whatever. Also, well, you know, you can have your canned meats and stuff. These are, you know, the bangers, uh, the sausage. These are good. I like these. And of course, the old standby, Spam. Now, I know a lot of people don't like these, but I tell you what, uh, it's not bad. Fry it up and have it with hash browns. And when you have done a really long road trip and you're really hungry, this stuff will suffice to fill you. Other items that I pack along with me is uh, Mrs. Miyagi made me up uh, these little packets of uh, oatmeal. She's got it with the raisins and the brown sugar already mixed in. So it makes kind of a nice little packet. And then there's always uh, these little tuna fish packets and or chicken packets or they come in different varieties you know chicken salad or tuna tuna salad stuff i always pack along some uh, tortillas um, 
that works well for the rest of the stuff. But also, if you want to do a quick lunch, this is great. You get a tortilla, squeeze that out on there, roll it up, and it's something to eat while you're sitting alongside the road. But the food is up to you. I mean, you can you can pick a lot of this stuff up. You don't have to go get these special packets. These aren't cheap. We got a deal on them through uh, Costco. We bought a couple of boxes. So those were the last trip I was just on. Um, I ended up eating these a lot because a lot of places I stayed, I wasn't close to a, um, a restaurant or a place to buy extra food. So these came in handy. I had water, you know, heated the water up, put them in the bag, waited my eight minutes or nine minutes, whatever it is, and uh, I had a meal. But you can also, like shopping for uh, these trips, you can also go to uh, the dollar stores. It's um, remarkable what you can find in the dollar stores that are that will work for you. There's already pre-cooked rice and stuff in packages and stuff that you can just like heat up and add stuff to it, like the tuna fish or whatever, and make a kind of a fancy little meal. It's all up to you. And the last thing on this food deal is we get to the coffee. Now, a lot of you guys are coffee or tea drinkers. You can always pack it in the bag. I buy these uh, Taster's Choice. They're not bad. I got a good deal through the, uh, through officesupply.com. I also like these Black Rifle uh, coffee sticks too. These are good. Uh, they're a little pricey. But uh, good, rich coffee. They taste well. Now, of course, you can always throw in hot chocolate. You can bring uh, regular ground coffee. I have what they call a palm press. And this is a palm press. Basically, what you do is you put your coffee in the bottom. At the bottom down there, it's uh, pre-ground coffee. You just put it in there. Add your water. Put your top on. Let it sit for the length of time you want. Turn it over onto a cup, and then you just press, and it squeezes all that out. It's a French press. They come apart fairly easy for cleaning. All this stuff comes out, and they're compact. They're kind of nice. And you can get these little small packets of uh, pre-ground coffee, or you can grind your own up. Now, I do have a grinder. But it takes up a little bit of space, and here we go, back to space again. We, you know, it's really nice to have all this, but how much, how much space do you have? I, when I pack my bike, sometimes it takes me four or five times to pack it the way I want it, and a lot of gear doesn't make it on the, make it on the bike. It stays, stays behind just to the fact that uh, I'm limited on space. And... Also, you got to consider weight and whatever else that gets involved in that situation, you know. So, it's all up to you. One other thing that we need to get into is the supply of water. Now, I bought these, uh, like I said, these stainless steel containers. You can get these through firebox stoves or uh, self-reliance outfitters. They're quite nice. Uh, you got extra water with you. You can also stop when you're at the gas station filling up. Go in and buy a couple of bottles of water. Strap them onto the bike. Always stay hydrated. That's a big thing out there. But you got extra water. Um, but if you're dispersed camping, you know, you can always buy one of these little uh, uh, water filtering kits, which I have here. This comes with a bladder and you can hang it from a tree and it'll drip in through a filter and you get some nice water and drip into one of your containers or just boil it over uh, a fire for a, a minute or two minutes and to kill off all the bacteria and such. And that's all I'm going to talk on that. And there's a lot of survivalists out there. They'll probably say something else, that, which is fine. That's what the comment section is for. Thanks. So in order to have a fire, and if you can have a fire, it depends on what the forestry department says or where you're at it's kind of nice to have a little fire kit now i have this one here that i just made up um, it's pretty simple 
I've got in here a uh, cigarette lighter, uh, just a generic one, some um, lint from the dryer. Believe it or not, this stuff works really well. Some jute string, uh, some um, pitch wood. That really works really well. I also have in here some uh, um, birch bark, which is full of oils. It'll start. I also carry um, these uh, starting pads that are from uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters. Um, these are quite nice because it doesn't take much to ignite these. And then I, of course, I've also have my ferro rod and I have in here some ma a magnesium stick that I can scrape off and then ignite. This also has a striker on, on uh, the back side of it that you can do, or you can come, I have the bigger one. I have like this one I really like because this puts out a lot of spark for lighting fires. Should have several different ways of starting a fire if need be. And it's surprisingly too, like on a jet boil or these little butane starters, if the little kick thing doesn't work, that little flint kicker will start them right up every time. I've used this lots of times starting fires, trying to get that uh, butane to go, boom, fires it right up. Okay, one more thing on lighting around the camp. These things here work quite well. This is something I got from uh, Harbor Freight. The only problem with them is, is that's as far as they fold up, so you've got to store them flat and such. Uh, you can use a USB charger on it. They work fairly well. Um, that means you got to have a charging bank. You either have to have your bike set up so you can use a, a USB port and charge these up. Or you got the standard flashlight, you know, which is just something for flowing around. Or my good old standby is the headlamp. These work really well. Um, especially if you're unpacking and stuff. And it does have the USB charging area, so you can charge that up. Uh, sometimes ca people carry those little charging bricks. Those work well. Uh, I do. I have a solar one that works fairly well. One of the things I did find, um, Home Depot has these little lights that you can get, I think they're about 15 bucks for the pair. And these are a USB charge. They're magnetic. They'll, so they'll, they'll uh, sit on anything. Uh, if you're working on the bike, they really work good at night, you know, on that. Plus, they have a little hanger. So if you got some spot in the tent where you can hang it, you've got that unit right there. So, and it helps light up the area. And it's got three different settings on it. And they work well. The charge stays on them fairly good but uh, helps light up your camp, which is, you know, you want to get into stuff. And like I said, the best one out of this is the headlamp, because you can put that and it directs the light whatever you want. Plus you can go into, uh, on these, you got the uh, red mode. Uh, I've noticed that I've used this a lot when I'm in a bug area and the bugs don't seem to go after the, the red light that they do more for the white light. So now we could go on and on here. Uh, what should I pack it in? Uh, how should I pack it on my bike? Well, that's going to all be up to you. Um, hell, I've packed it up in an old canvas bag, stuffed it in a, stuffed everything in a plastic bag, rolled it up into a canvas bag and tied it to the bike and went on my way. Yeah, you know, it's whatever you want. I mean, you can go to the big expense of all sorts of different items for packing this gear. But it's, you know, it's what you got sometimes. And you just make do with that until you can figure out what you really want. All I'm doing out here is I'm just giving you ideas, stuff that I've used in the past, stuff I'm using now. Um... What kind of makes my, my life a little more comfortable out there on the road? And that's the thing, is just trying to make yourself more comfortable. 
but getting back to it, I mean, uh, you never know what's going to happen out there on the road. Um, it's always a challenge, you know, trying to camp somewhere, um, trying to find a, maybe a motel to stay at or just pulling off to the side onto a side road on a dirt road back in the air and find a little spot to pull over, throw down a tarp, throw your bag down. That's, you know, I've done it. I, I've been through this before and you just take it as a part of the, part of the ride. Um, it's not about the destination, it's the ride. And think about that, though. It is. So, um, I've tried to cover everything here. Uh, I know this is a fairly long video, and we've gotten into a lot of stuff. So, you know, you can always take your time going through and back and forth and, and figuring out what you kind of want to take on the trip. What, you know. But first off, you want to know, like, I, 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 like I'm always suggesting, is that if, if you're new into this, do a short trip. Do to somewhere where you you know the area. Um, okay, you got cell service in case you need to get help or whatever. To make uh, Mrs. Miyagi happy, I got one of these um, Garmin uh, Mini in reach. Now these are programmed you, with uh, little calls that you can do. You can text on this to home to your loved one and let them let them know i have some preset ones here i am this is my location this is my camp um no cell service i'm okay all that kind of stuff and then it also comes with uh an sos now you have to buy a subscription uh, for uh, for this to operate on the GPS uh, satellites, but you don't have to use it all the time. You don't have to buy the year long one. You can go month to month. Now I'm on a month to month, and it's about fifteen bucks, and that's fifteen month bucks of security for your your whole yourself and the and the fam your family. Uh, it just makes everybody feel better when they can get that little text. Oh, he's okay. He's at camp. And then it'll bring up if they have, you know, on their cell phone, it'll bring up the, usually the map point where you're at. So as Mrs. Miyagi says, I, we have a search point to start from to find your body. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? I love that woman. <laughs> anyway. So. Like I've said, I know this is a long video and, I, and I've got a lot of information on here. Um, but as always, if there's any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. And if you can also send them to my email address at tmiyagi at hotmail.com. And if you've liked this video, please like, share and subscribe and don't forget that ringy dingy button up there for the next episode coming up so this is mr miyagi saying be safe out there hope to see you on the road ciao